But Mike Bobo haters are not going to like these numbers that I found. I'm not I'm not digging uh, through through mines or anything like that to find these. These are really easy to find numbers, but Georgia's offensive statistics in 2023 were impressive, right? You're coming off of a couple year span where Georgia's winning national championships and Todd Munkin is being praised, and rightfully so, for his efforts as Georgia's offensive coordinator and what they were able to do as an offense with Stetson Bennett, Brock Bowers, all those guys that they had those couple of years with, with Todd Munkin being the coordinator for three years at Georgia. The numbers were great, and Georgia was winning national championships. And guess what? <laughs> Last year, Georgia was a top 10 offense. Uh, you could argue they were a top 5 offense because guess what? In total offense... Georgia, fifth, 496.5 yards per game. And we saw a couple games where they they flirted with 600 yards, a couple games where they got that 500-yard mark. And then you look at the scoring as well. Georgia ended the season fifth in, to- in a scoring offense with 40.1 points per game. Who I mean, who was higher when you think about the college football offenses from 2023? You think about the Heisman winner with... Jaden Daniels, yes, they were the number one offense with 45.5 points per game. You think of, uh, you know, another Heisman winner in Caleb Williams. They were in front, but, you know, USC wasn't that great of a team. Oklahoma scored more, not that great of a team, which is really not my point. My point is, you think about really good offenses across the country. Georgia's was scoring more than Washington, scoring more than, uh, you know, Michigan, the national champion, who was more of a defensive team and and a running team, but... Mike Bobo and the Dogs and Carson Beck, they put together a really good offensive showing in 2020, uh, 2023. Top 20 in both passing and rushing offense. And I think that the balance of those two, and it's kind of what I want to base the second half of this conversation about, the balance of the passing and running, I think, is part of why Georgia's offense was so good. Being number 20 uh, in, in rushing, being number 11 in passing. You go through and you look at that top 20, there's not a lot of... I feel like I'm preparing for my March Madness bracket, which is not busted as we speak. Um, when I'm looking at top 20 offense, top 20 defensive efficiencies and stuff like that, I'm looking at it with this Georgia football team, and it kind of tells you a little bit of the story as to why everyone thinks and why they have been the best team in college football for the last few years. But more importantly... This is an offensive unit under Mike Bobo and his return as Georgia's coordinator that was elite. And that was arguably top five numbers-wise. Kind of proves that it was top five when you combine the total offense at almost 500 yards a game and the total scoring at over 40 points per game. You're scoring 40 points per game in college football. You're winning most of your college football games unless you just don't have a very good defense. And that's how you see the difference between a Southern California and a Georgia. And a Georgia whose defense wasn't, you know... Historic last year. It was it was a good defense. It wasn't a, a elite defense. Right? We saw what an elite defense was a couple years ago. And a good defense still brings that good of a football team for the dogs. Ryan Culley from Dog Post talking about Georgia's offense. A little bit of what I think you should expect to see out of them in 2024. What you should expect to see out of Mike Bobo in 2024 with the personnel. The personnel has changed and so things will change. Signs keep pointing to the dogs are going to be really good on offense again, despite, you know, having to deal with some turnover at certain positions. And I think that actually, I'm not saying that that uh, missing out on Brock Bowers is, is not going to hurt Georgia. I think, you know, not having that phenomenal football player is is not good. But they were, you know, they, they succeeded without Bowers in the lineup last year and and they've showed that they can win without him. Obviously, it's been a long time since they haven't had that guy. But maybe you should expect this offense to take a step forward. It depends on Carson Beck and what he's capable of doing. But everyone, everyone, that's a generality. It seems that most of the experts and myself believe that he's going to be really good this season. Heisman frontrunner. The, the Heisman frontrunner part, I'd have to, I have to sit on that one a little bit more. But I do think Carson Beck is capable of being the best quarterback in college football this year, the way he's projected to be. I think he's got some competition with a few other guys for that title. But if he can lead Georgia's offense to similar output this year, have more starts under his belt, then yes, I think we are talking about the best quarterback in college football, at least the one that's leading the best team in college football and doing it in an efficient way, as he did last year, throwing around a 72% clip 
completion-wise, getting around 300 yards passing a game. I mean, that was what Carson Beck was accomplishing. What I want you to accomplish is to sign up for our newsletter, the Dog Post newsletter. I'm linking it, as always, in the description of this video down below. Make sure you're checking it out. It's, look, Trevor Etienne, right? DUI charge or, or you know, that's, there's, that's at least the speculation. He's been arrested. So you get breaking news like that. I'm, you know, maybe you don't like that. And maybe that one's a little bit more touchy. You get breaking news when uh, Carson Beck was the announced the starting quarterback a year ago, right? Those are the things you're getting pushed out of content, but it's not just breaking news that you get out of the Dog Post newsletter. You get links to every single story that we are putting out there, all sorts of content. It's the best way to stat, stay tapped in as a Georgia fan. Make sure you sign up. And thank you to those who are already doing that. I'm shouting out Eco Poly as well. I am linking them in the description of this video. The personnel is different for Georgia in 2024. No Brock Bowers, right? Benjamin Urasek's coming in. Oscar Delp's there. Lawson Lucky's there. I think they've got plenty of solid tight ends that can be weapons in this offense. And it was look, it wasn't about just obviously having a caliber player like that makes Georgia's offense better. But it wasn't about him. It was about everything and the balance of it. If you know, barring that Trevor Etienne is is not punished in any severe way and is still on the team and all of that, he should be a very productive player for Georgia, and I think that they will be better off at running back this year. Just because if they are healthy, I think they've got more bodies with a little bit more overall total total. Kendall Milton and Dejan Edwards had a lot of experience. Them being injured at times, them being not a hundred percent at times, definitely hurt Georgia in the run game, and I think that that's a spot that can get better. And the balance, like I said, having a very, very good run offense and a very, very good pass offense, having a balanced offense is what equates to being a really, really good one, unless you are just absolutely amazing at one thing. But Georgia hasn't been doing that. Georgia's been doing it by being able to attack you in different ways in different games and game planning for specific things. Georgia's got plenty of different weapons. When you go through and you just list the different types they have, you can do all sorts of different things. You have vertical threats. In, in Arian Smith. And I think Anthony Evans can be a vertical threat for them. I think that Dominic Lovett, to an extent, could be a vertical threat for them. In the past, you saw Lab McCarkey do that. I also think Dylan Bell can be a vertical threat for them. You've got weapons on the outside. You've got Kobe Young. You've got Ra-Ra Thomas. You've got Benjamin Yurisek. I think he's going to be a big pass target for them. I don't know how involved, but I think he's definitely going to be out there. You've got probably the best offensive line in college football, which is where this thing starts. And over and over again, we pound on how this is one of the biggest difference makers for Georgia. Having the depth and having the experience and having the guys up front changes things. And it makes life easier for Carson Beck to get the football into these guys' hands. Now that Carson Beck is going into year two in a, well, one, the system changes a little bit when there's turnover with Mike Bobo, right? So now year two of as the starter and chemistry with Bobo being the play caller, but year five of the program. So this is a guy that's been around a long time. Now he's got a year starting under his belt. He gets to be in this offense as the guy, the unquestioned player over the course of spring, fall workouts, all that. He's not competing. He can just work on getting better. So if the trigger man can be better, which is Carson Beck, and he was already one of the best, and you've still got a lot of good, really good weapons around him. He's still got probably the best offensive line, and you think that the run game might be able to be a little bit better, then the only expectation, I think, to have, if you're going to make one, is that Georgia's offense will take another step forward in 2024. If you play it with that logic. What's my opinion? I think that Georgia's offense is going to be really good again. I think it's probably just going to have similar numbers. right? I don't think this is an offense that's going to take a gigantic step forward or a gigantic step back. I have a hard time seeing it take even a big step back, a minor one maybe. I think this offense is just a little bit better in 2024. If the defense is a little better too, then we're you know we're talking about a different story. But that wasn't the conversation for this. It has the potential to be really good, and I feels like Carson Beck is the one that this depends on the most, right? The Heisman front runner. Look, the Bobo haters, all those numbers and everything I just talked about. Right, I think it's proof of the pudding. Look, Georgia's putting up 50 points on multiple SEC teams last year. That's all you need to know. Links are down below. Thanks for watching.